So, brilliant. Let's move on to question B3. So, in this exercise, you will practice writing a unit test and use Rust benchmarking functionality to help you optimize a Fizzbuzz app. Okay, so we need Cargo Criterion, so we better install that. I don't know what this is. This is. That seems to be installing. Uh, okay, so how many of these are there? B3A, just this is B3A. No, and B3B. Yeah, testing Fizzbuzz and then benchmarking Fizzbuzz. Okay, so let's go into the Fizzbuzz project. So we can just quit out from Vim and go into the three Fizzbuzz project. And then it said we should open source lib. So here we are. Apparently this is a very naive implementation of Fizzbuzz. And we've got a to-do here, so let's read the instructions. So it says, create a unit test that verifies the correctness of the Fizzbuzz function. You can use the include str macro to include fizzbuzz.out into my binary. Each line of fizzbuzz.out contains the expected output of the Fizzbuzz function, given the line number as input. Okay. Fine. So if we run cargo test now, what happens? Let's just go into the correct directory. So it's going to build some stuff, and there is no unit test for this yet. So I guess not a lot is going to happen when we run cargo test. So let's make a test module. Uh, and make a test, and let's just, I think probably we're just going to write one test, because really Fizzbuzz only does one thing, right? Uh, if I could type any of this stuff, um, it does, so basically output matches expected. And what they said we should do is read in include str. Use include str. So let expected equal include str of fizzbuzz dot out. I guess I want to see whether that works before I do anything else. Okay, it's in the wrong. This I guess this should be dot dot slash right. That's weird that our source, a piece of source code is reading in a file from the directory above. I'm not, not happy about that, but I'm going to leave it because that's how they, they wanted it. So now we're running a test. And it did run. No, it doesn't actually check anything yet. So that's our expected stuff. And, uh, it returns, Fizzbuzz returns a string. Okay. So we're just going to loop through the lines of expected. Um, so I think it does uh, for line of expected dot lines. I think we found out before that we can have lines as a function on a str, right? Uh, oh, I'm gosh, I'm writing JavaScript again. Sorry. Um, so basically, each line we need to do enumerate again, right? We're gonna um, no, we're gonna let's zip, let's zip. No, let's not tip. Let's enumerate. So we're going to say, like, this is basically line number, comma line, um, and uh, so we're getting all the lines from that output file, and each time round we're going to call Fizzbuzz with num plus one, because we want to start at one, surely. Uh, I guess we should double check what's in fizzbuzz.out. Yeah, so we start at one. So start at one. Uh, we can import that from. I normally use superstar. I never thought of how that's superstar, but there we go. And we want to make an assertion. Assert that calling fizzbuzz is equal to 
uh, return to string that is equal to the line that we've been given. Now it's expecting us to pass in a u32 and we've got a u size. So for the numbers we're talking about, because fizzbuzz.out is only 1000 lines long, it really doesn't matter. So I think I can just say as u size. If I was worried that at some time, oh, it's not letting me. Uh, is it because I need brackets? Maybe. If I was worried that this it, this isn't an okay thing to do, why why don't you like me? Okay, we have to like convert it. Fine, let's do this in a separate line. Let um, so let's call this line num starting counting from zero, and let's let num, which is a u size. I can never remember what you're supposed to do um, to do this, but I think into dot unwrap will work, and then we can just call fizzbuzz with num, and it looks a bit cleaner here. Uh, hang on. Okay, I was doing everything wrong. Yeah, right. Something like that. This should be line num. Okay, so it doesn't want to use. Does it really? I think I just want. Isn't there a U size from. Something like this. What does it think of that? It should obviously be line num. Oh, okay. The reason why I was getting so confused is the, the other way round. It's a U32 that I'm trying to get from a U size. So this should be fine. But it might fail. No. So can I do U32 from that? I don't think so, because I'd be able to do into if I could. So we can't actually create a... So we can do a try from. Right? Surely. And now it returns a result. Uh, we can just explain why this is never going to happen. Unable to convert uh, U size to U32. Should ne it should never happen, so just going to complain. And I haven't got my code formatting how I want it here, so I'll do it manually. Oh, no, okay. I actually need to copy my um, Rust format to here. Now hopefully it will format the correct way, or the way I like it. All right, so I think if we finally got a unit test, let's try it. If it passes, I'm sus and I want to change something, right? So this should be goo, right? And it failed uh, saying, no, it's not goo. Fine, so it does actually work. So that FizzBuzz implementation is correct, at least up to a 1,000. Uh, we've unit tested it. That's what they asked us to do. And we checked that the test is really testing it, so I think we've done that part. So now benchmarking. You'll probably have noticed the FizzBuzz implementation not very optimized. Well, I haven't really looked at it. Um, we will put, we will use Criterion to help us benchmark FizzBuzz. To run a benchmark, run the following command. All right. Well, let's run the command, and then we'll have a look at the um, implementation. See if we can make it any better. All right, so it's building a load of stuff again. So it's going to run the benchmarks, report some statistics on the terminal, and generate an HTML report. That's nice, isn't it? Um, so we can have a look at that in this browser. 
So my job is to imp optimize the implementation and use Cargo Criterion to prove that we've actually made it better. We can change the signature if we want to. Um, but we've got to make sure that the function is able to produce the output. How fast can I fizz buzz? Well, I don't want to get too busy with this because um, I'm sure you could spend as much time as you like making this fast. So it's saying an average, I guess this is an average time of 52 odd nanoseconds to do a fizz pass, which is not bad. Let's have a look at uh, these benchmarks and see what it's doing. Bench FizzBuzz. It makes a group called FizzBuzz. It provides some input and then it does some stuff, magic, and then it calls FizzBuzz with that input and then it finishes. So it's basically just saying uh, when we run FizzBuzz with these inputs, just time how long it takes. Still going. Um, oh, and it's it, they've chosen the inputs to be ones that um, like exercise the different aspects of FizzBuzz, so that's good. Now let's have a look at the implementation. The implementation of FizzBuzz returns a string, um, and they say, what do they say? Make sure the function is able to correctly produce the output. So make sure the function is able to correctly produce the output. So that says to me, it needs to be in string form. I think. I think that's what it says to me. Um, but maybe we can do it with, uh, with by creating fewer strings, maybe. Um, or at least allocating less memory. Okay, we've done this so we can get rid of our to-do. And because we've got a unit test, we know whatever we do, if we mess it up, um, it, will, it will tell us. Okay, the benchmarks run. And so some of these things are fast. So 15 is very fast. But yeah, they, they're coming out as kind of 50 odd nanoseconds with a few tens. Well, not tens, but in the, in the teens. So I think like the most immediate thing I can see to improve this implementation is to take in a reference to a string, um, a mutable reference to a string, and make sure that it's long enough to contain uh, the output that we need. And then I can, I think I can just say this. Um, yes, yeah, so I will no longer return a string. I don't know if there's a better way of doing this without, because this kind of makes the code worse, doesn't it? So we can do, we can actually put this star out here like this. Is this going to work? No, because it we need to like do some kind of thing that says I mean maybe this. If we dereference the asmute str and say that should equal Yeah, that's no good. But you can surely can edit a stress somehow um, by like setting. Like I guess we could we could take a range of it and then not quite sure. Let's do it in one place for a start. Let's just do. <laughs> let's not be too clever all at once, and let's see if we can just do. Well, there's any method on out of like. Um, replace or something. Reserve. We're going to use reserve in a minute. Um, but yeah, I want to say like the first few bytes, or the first bit of this string is going to be replaced by this stuff, and the length is going to be. But that's kind of. Uh, 
it's going to be a bit evil. Like we're going to have to do unsafe, I think, to uh, to set the length of a string. I think that's unsafe. So this string, what can we do to it? I mean, we can treat it as a mutable reference, um, and we could then replace it with. Well, I don't. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's start by make allocating this string, but maybe it will be optimized out. Um, so we can do something like this. So then the code doesn't look much different from how it looked before. And it does allocate these strings, but uh, maybe the compiler can just um, deal with it. So we're going to create a string before we do anything. Um, which is going to be a string with capacity, which has enough capacity to fit the longest string we're going to have here, which is probably fits both, right? Like, the numbers don't get longer than that. So we'll just say capacity of... Uh, well, it's eight. Yeah, it's eight, so we'll be exact. And we're going to call fizzbuzz and pass in a mutable reference to out. So this calling is going to have to happen uh, here. And then we'll say out should. Well, that should be a semicolon. Uh, and then we say assert that our out should be that, and it has to be immutable. It has to be immutable for this to work. And now let's check whether our tests still pass. Okay, our tests do pass. Um, but is it any faster? Let's find out. Well, we've got to fix our um, benchmark because we're doing something different. So let's make a string. Again, with the right capacity, that's like a uh, like a. We should document Fizzbuzz to say. Um, you you have to call this if you want the best performance. You have to call this with a string of capacity eight. Okay, how are we going to do? Has this made it any faster at all? It's still allocating those strings, but maybe the compiler can optimize it out. Okay, it looks like. It's a little bit better. Maybe we can do better again. Maybe not. Um, and I'm thinking what what we can do is well. Do we have to provide an actual string? Because like it would be quite easy for us to provide an array of bytes. What does it say? Make sure the function is able to correctly produce the output. It doesn't actually say it has to be a string, does it? Okay, so this this it got worse. So maybe we just got lucky. Um, that's not good, is it? I mean, we're still calling format, which seems like that might be quite bad. Oh, and look, this has got worse. Okay, all right. This did not work out. This did not work out. So uh, I guess we can think about... We can look up string and see whether it has any anything we're missing that lets us mutate it so we could it just feels really awful but we could get it as a mutable string and then poke bytes into it and set its length but surely there's a better way So this inserts characters into it. Um, shortens this string. With capacity is how we created it in the first place. So 
it's not like feeling particularly like mutating strings is not particularly for a kind of friendly feeling. Um, so I guess we could we could do string from some way. But it all feels to me, to me like it's going to allocate. So we want we really want to treat this string like it's just an array of bytes. And can we set its length? I mean, we could do some kind of substring on it. Shrink, so that's shrinking the capacity. We want to keep the capacity the same all the time. Um, remove, remove the character. No. Pop and push, treat it like a stack. Gives us a length, but we want to set the length. So we want to maybe clear. Yeah, I think we want to clear it. And then... Um, I, maybe... Set bytes on it. I don't really want to clear it. I want to set its length to a particular length. So this returns a mutable reference to the contents of this string. So this is this is giving us a string as bytes, but it's unsafe. So this would work for us. Whereas as mute str. Then we could, so we could call pushstra. Okay, I think this is what we want. Clear and then pushstra. That's the, I'm trying to find a non-evil way to do this. Um, so I think what we want to do is say, start out, or oh, oh, just out.clear. And then out.pushstra. So now we're not going to allocate strings in here for these cases, because we're just going to return a str. In all these cases. Now this case is interesting, and we could just, for now, we could just do this. Uh, no, we couldn't. Um, I just feel like that will live long enough for us. To, okay, but what we can do is just uh, I guess we can do, yeah, yeah. We can treat these cases separately, so we won't do. We won't look. It's got a bit messy anyway, hasn't it? So we're just going to do out dot push draw. This buzz. I did say I wasn't going to get too enthusiastic about this, didn't I? Push draw. Bars. Load of semicolons because this has done its work now. And this should be star out equals blah. Okay, that might, that, like, we're allocating a string here, but we're not allocating strings in these other places. Is it going to be faster? Let's find out. I mean, does it work as well? Let's, let's cargo test first. Check that it really... Okay, it still works. Fine. We'll do the cartoon. Um, yeah, so... We've managed to... Like, the string has capacity 8, so it shouldn't need to reallocate capacity to do to do a clear and then push through of this or this or this. But then here it will have to create this string and then place it into... Yeah, unless the compiler is clever enough to optimize that out. Um, however, it doesn't seem like this is performing any better at all. Ah, but then, okay, it's performing much better for the cases that don't need to allocate this string, right? So, threes and the fives and so on. So, it has worked, it's just that this format call is really expensive. So let's try and do better than that. 
Maybe there's another push draw we can do where we turn I into a... Um, we can somehow turn I into a... Uh, well, if we're going to... Maybe we are going to create a string anyway. We just won't use format. How does that look? No, but we could do... Uh, we could do two string. And we might need to implement our own two string if we really wanted to get serious about this. Okay, so we're definitely seeing huge improvements for things that are not just numbers. Check it works. Still works. Now, let's see whether we've got an improvement here from um, not using the format macro, which probably is quite clever. And we need something much, much simpler. Okay, that's good. That's significantly better, isn't it? Do we think we can implement a faster two-string than Rust? Um, I mean, we, we're going to do something much simpler than what Rust does, but I think not. I think I'm going to say we've done really well there. We've improved the performance of FizzBars considerably. Three should be, uh, We haven't changed how three works. There should be no change. Yeah, that's what it says. But look, one and two are now much faster. They're only taking 35 nanoseconds, so we've saved at 30 odd percent in performance there and 80 odd percent in the simpler cases. It's a little bit tempting to try and optimize uh, some of the other numbers because we can see that, that the hard coded string is, is going much faster than. Um, uh, then calling two string. Oh no, it's, it says 15 has regressed. Okay, what have we done wrong? Oh no, look, it was just super fast, and now it's just there's just been some slight variation in performance. So I think it's fine. I think it's fine. There, but the the important things, numbers which are not a fizz or a buzz or a fizz buzz, have improved a great deal. So let's I think whether there's anything we can do with the shape of this. Um, we want to minimize the amount of maths we do, I guess. So we could check for whether it's 15. Then we'd only, yeah, okay, that would be a slight improvement. So let's have a look. I think that would be a slight improvement. I might be wrong, of course, that's why you measure. So let's check whether it's, oh, but the problem is this is going to fail very often. No, no, it's still better because every time we, we're, we're presenting with three, we're also presenting with five every time. And then we're presenting with five, uh, if not three as well. So this way, there's some cases where we can immediately fizz buzz. Uh, and then if we're, if, if we're not 15, we know that we'll be, uh, that should be equal to zero, obviously. And then if it's three, hang on, have I done that wrong? I think I might have done that wrong. Doesn't matter which way around these are, so let's leave them the way around they were before. So this, let's just check I haven't broken it. Okay, and then let's see whether that's a tiny little bit faster. When will it be faster? It would be faster just for the 15 case, I guess. And it might be slower because it has to do three. This might be slower because one, for example, it compares it against 15 and three and five. Yes, yeah, so this is worse. But it'd be really good for 15. So it's fine for, for buzzes because they, um, they're still just doing the two comparisons. It's improved for, okay, it's improved for five because 
Why? Previously it was doing a percent three and a percent five. And then, no, previously it was doing a percent three and then a percent five. Now it's doing a percent fifteen, a percent three and a percent five. So how can it be better? I don't understand. But yeah, you can see a big improvement for 15. So if we really cared about the 15 case, um, then this kind of optimization to check for 15 might be good. But yeah, flattening it is, is not helping because every number that doesn't match any of these three now has to get checked three times. And previously there was a chance for it to only be checked twice. So let's try making guaranteeing that it will only ever be checked twice. Uh, hang on, we, we can already guarantee it's only checked twice. It's this one and this one, or it's this one and this one. Um, so that's pretty good from that point of view. Um, I mean, what I could do is have a big fat array of all the numbers and just check whether, just look up in an array of all the 1,000 things, the answer, and then print it out. But I think I feel like that's cheating. So let's call it a day there. Uh, all right, so well done if you've made it all the way through. We we improved our implementation of FizzBuzz. We used Criterion to benchmark it and check uh, to make sure we really had improved it. We then faffed around, and we weren't very disciplined about like which number are we trying to improve. There's all these different numbers here, and uh, like how do we if one's got worse and one's got better? How do we know? which one we prefer. So I would like to be quite a lot more disciplined about um, like being clear what metric we're trying to improve. Cool. All right. Thanks very much for sticking out through uh, all the exercises. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time we'll be back to uh, going through lectures and stuff like that.